we thought we'd talk to you tonight about is um, a little bit about the 30,000 foot view of the project, what's going on um, up north in Sacramento where our offices, is, offices are, um, and kind of what's going on locally um, in the Palm Data Los Angeles section. The state has uh, initiated the process to develop uh, uh, alternative alignments throughout California um, for an 800 mile high speed rail, uh, rail system. Uh, and they divided this, the, the different segments up into, I don't know, there's seven different segments statewide. Um, and each one of these different segments um, will ultimately end up in a, an environmental review. Um, and so what we've been doing since 2007 is basically kick off the environmental review process, um, develop our alignment alternatives throughout California, um, and analyze those alternatives at a very high level. Back in July of last year, uh, at the MTA headquarters, the High Speed Rail Authority Board held a meeting and we presented to them what we call our preliminary list of alternatives. Um, and basically we come up the San Fernando Valley following the met existing Metrolink corridor, basically sharing that corridor with Metrolink. Uh, so there would be two track for high speed train and two track for freight and Metrolink service in that, that corridor. The ultimate goal of the system um, is to not just use taxpayer money to build it. Um, part of it will be an investment by some third party uh, into the high-speed rail system and then that particular third party or third parties, however many of them you know, ultimately will be, um, will receive uh, you know, some return on their investment. And that could include a number of potential uh, investors, the Japanese and the Chinese and the French and the Spaniards and the Germans, uh, all have some interest in uh, potentially investing in a system like this in California. The primary rail system that comes through here follows the Santa Clara River, and part of it follows that on the, on the maps you have, but it seems like it diverges from that through town for some reason. Do you have a, I mean, that must have been a planning item to look at. Trying to exactly follow the Metro Link alignment is impossible, mm -hmm. so we have to straighten it out significantly. Anytime we cross the fault, um, it's a concern. Uh, to say that it's an insurmountable concern is, is not, not the case. Our criteria is to cross all major faults uh, at grade. And so we've got alignment alternatives that cross the San Andreas Fault uh, at grade. Um, does that mean an earthquake, the line won't break? Yes, it will break. Um, but uh, you know, being at grade, it lessens the impact. We'll be able to repair it relatively quickly. And if you take, uh, as an example, you look at a country like Japan, which is much more seismically active than the United States. Uh, they have very sophisticated seismic control technologies on these trains. And if you look at the 50 years of operations, if you look at the Kobe earthquake and a lot of the earthquakes that have recently happened in Japan, the history there is that the trains stay on the tracks, nobody's injured, and the system's put back in place and, and they go property owners along the route who are already receiving their EIR letters that, that you're asking for access onto their property. If you were to take those properties, how would those property owners be compensated? Project owner and proponent is the California High Speed Rail Authority. You know, they have the power, they will have the power of eminent domain and it will be handled however that's handled. You know, in my experience, um, you know, an offer is made, the state makes an offer to the homeowner, a negotiation ensues, and you try to resolve uh, the differences. We're looking at a half mile on either side of the alignment to get an idea of what the baseline conditions are, any archeological features, soil conditions, all those sorts of things. And so we're just sending blanket letters out to every homeowner that's on either side of this alignment, saying if, you, if it's okay with you, we'd like permission to come onto your property and do these assessments but that's an entirely voluntary process at this point. You mentioned a minimum, a maximum time between Los Angeles and San Francisco. Can that speed be adjusted through a, a more curved area to accommodate the terrain that's there today? Meaning, could you follow the canyon and the riverbed if you slowed the train down some during that part of the operation and, 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 yeah, and yeah. work it within your time, within your speed? In terms of that travel time, at that speed, we're talking every second counts. And so that's what we're up against here. So taking a particular section like this, which may be as many as 30 miles, and slowing the train down, it's going to be dead on arrival. The supervisor on December 29th sent out a letter that he opposed the 
project as it currently stands right now. So that's what the meeting prior to this one was about, is looking for alternatives so that you don't have the routes going through the community. We had a long discussion this afternoon about what the parameters and the mandates were for what the authorities has to work with. Well, were they given good authority, or not authority, but good parameters and good mandates to work with? And that's something that we're going to have to go look at. We have elected officials from the state level that we're obviously going to have to go talk to also. You know, uh, it, it's one thing to say, thou shalt do this, but if it can't be achievable without destroying communities, maybe they need to go back and, and look at a different way of doing it. You know, two hours and 45 minutes is great to get to, you know, San Francisco, Sacramento. I'd love that. Uh, getting on the train at, at Sacramento, or uh, at Palmdale and getting up there. But on the other hand, if it was three hours and 15 minutes, Norman, you know, that just means I read a couple more pages in the book. Jane Kegel here, reporting for the Act Negwood Olsen News. Today is January 19th, 2011, and graduation prep night is in a couple of weeks. So can you explain to me a little bit about the event that's going to be going on in a few weeks? Yes, it's graduation prep night. It's for juniors, and it's going to be Wednesday, February 2nd at 6.30 p.m. High Desert Middle School. And we're going to be going over transcripts, A through G requirements for the CSU and UC system, financial aid, doing a graduation check um, for the juniors, and going over ACT and SAT requirements. Okay, Ms. Harrison, can you explain to me a little bit about the program that's going to be uh, offered to the freshmen and sophomores as well? Yes, we're going to be doing a college and career planning workshop. We're going to be doing that on Wednesday, March 2nd at 6.30 p.m. at High Desert Middle School. We'll be doing transcript reviews. We'll be going over um, four-year plans, and we'll be doing UC, CSU, and NCAA planning for the students who are interested in going on to be student athletes or going to four-year colleges. And we'll also be going over um, career and technical education Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time, Ms. Harrison. You're welcome.